down with Pablo Hidalgo from the Lucasfilm Story Group. We take a look at the new Death Star DLC from Battlefront, and much, much more. Now, from the Lucasfilm headquarters, it's the Star Wars Show. Hello, I'm Peter Townley. And I am the real, human, non-hologram Andy Gutierrez back from vacation, and this is the Star Wars Show. Or are you? No touching! <laughs> Let's go to the news. If you're like me, then you probably love the music from Star Wars Rebels and are dying to get some of those sweet galactic jams all up in your ear holes. Well, the wait is finally over! Star Wars Rebels is releasing not one, but two brand new albums featuring music from Season 1 and Season 2. Composed by Kevin Kiner, the Season 1 soundtrack features 28 tracks, while Season 2 packs in 33. You can download Season 1 on September 16th and Season 2 on September 30th. Apple released iOS 10 this week, and with the upgrade comes the ability to add stickers to iMessage which also means that you can now add animated Star Wars stickers into all of your conversations on iOS 10 because the future is now! Words are boring! It's all about animated stickers now! And Star Wars stickers! The pack includes 21 different stickers, ranging from a BB-8 thumbs up, Luke shouting, no, and even Vader choking someone with the Force, because that's how you punctuate a message in the glorious future we live in. The Star Wars stickers are available right now in the App Store for $1.99. Also announced this week were the winners in the ILM Art Department Challenge, where over 3,800 artists from 101 countries competed to see if they had what it takes to be a concept artist at ILM. You can check out the winning art and the incredible runners-up at this link. Finally, Star Wars Battlefront is on the precipice of releasing the new Death Star DLC. But what would a new Battlefront release be without an awesome trailer, right? Well, this Friday, EA and DICE will be releasing a brand new trailer for the Death Star expansion pack. And wouldn't you know it, the Star Wars show managed to get this sneak peek just for you. Enjoy. Skywalker reporting. All right, guys, today on the Star Wars show, we are joined by my friend, Lucasfilm Story Group's Pablo Hidalgo. Hey, Andy. Hi, Pablo. What do you want to talk about? Star Wars. All right. <laughs> I could do that. Yeah, so you've been with the company for a long time now. It'll be 17 years in February. That's wild. Yeah. And you've been a Star Wars fan since Star Wars became Star Wars. Since I was a, yeah. a wee, wee little child, yeah, yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about how your fandom grew? In 1987, when I went to a game store and found the Star Wars role-playing game, which was just freshly published by West End Games, then I just became obsessed with it. That's when I realized, okay, I'm a fan for life here, because it, it became a place for me to tell my own stories. Mm -hmm. In my circle of friends, we'd all played different games, but only I could run the Star Wars game, because okay. only I, like, I just became a control freak about it. Right? <laughs> and I took it upon myself to become as knowledgeable of Star Wars as possible in order to make as authentic an experience for my circle of friends who would play the game, right? Because mm -hmm. I didn't want them asking a question about the universe and me saying, uh, I don't know. <laughs> and even if I wow, didn't... Wow, that has become like your life. <laughs> well, yeah, right? And even if I didn't know, at least I could extrapolate in a way that builds off the knowledge that I did know. Mm -hmm. So at no point did they sort of see the seams of the universe. To them, it was like, okay, I'm in this fictional space, and I feel like no matter where I go, I could get a story. So you kind of developed your, your Star Wars and storytelling bug through these games and, and growing up. Tell me about how you transitioned into making that your professional job? Well, it was it was a combination of things. Like, it wasn't my only interest. Um, you know, I was also cultivating an interest in animation and filmmaking at the same time. So I ended up transitioning more as a writer, though. I flipped a coin. I decided, like, well, I, I have illustration background, I have writing background. So as I was writing, then I started freelancing for the role-playing game company. And that's that's basically, like, became, I realized, wait, I can make, I could do something professionally with Star Wars. And how did you come to land at Lucasfilm? At the 96 Gen Con, convention, Steve Sansweet was there. And so I got a chance to meet Steve, and I had heard through the grapevine that he was writing the Star Wars Encyclopedia. And I said, you know, Steve, I kind of, I've got Just my so own encyclopedia. To... Yeah, it's like, if you need help, if you need a hand. And he took me up on the offer, so he sent me the manuscript, and I, and I offered notes on it. There was a job posting uh, on lucasfilm.com for an internet content developer. Mm -hmm. I'd asked Steve whether or not I could use him as a reference. And he said no. I'm like, oh, well, why not? And it's like, because uh, I'm going to be interviewing you. Uh. 
<laughs> so, it's, you so know, that worked out pretty. It worked well. out pretty well. Yeah. Tell me about how you kind of progressed through the company to where you are now in the story group. People quickly came to realize, well, this guy knows his Star Wars, and that just became part of making Star Wars stuff. Is like make sure Pablo has seen it before it goes out the door. And so, as more and more parts of the company realized I could be an asset in that regard, I decided to uh, kind of formalize the role and say, isn't there a capacity where I could look at everything that comes out? And then that was right around the time that you know Lucasfilm basically got reinvigorated with Kathleen Kennedy coming aboard and the, having this whole plan for more feature films. And she instituted the story group, you know, with Kiri Hart in charge of it. There was a core group, and, and Kiri decided that they needed someone like me and someone like Leland and eventually someone like Matt, mm -hmm. you know, folks who really know a lot of the details about Star Wars to not only offer that expertise but also just offer the expertise of of, of having been here having that institutional knowledge of knowing what we've done in the past, what was important to George. There's a lack of information, I think, about what it is the story group does. A lot of people have misconceptions about the amount of power you have or the decisions <laughs> you make. Can you kind of give the Cliff's Notes version of, of your role? Yeah, I think the easiest thing that people will latch their heads around is like, oh, you must, you're like a continuity cop. And it's like, well, that's not really it, right? It's, it's more about like, if you were to try to boil it down is, is we work with any creative who is wanting to tell a story in Star Wars. And we help them find the story that they want to tell, but also make sure that story fits within the framework of Star Wars, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not just about making sure the number of moons over a planet is correct. It's more about, you know, what thematically, what are you going for? And what's the best way to, to achieve that with Star Wars? And also, is the story that you're telling is it something we've done before, or is it something that's also actually in development somewhere else in the company? So we become this sort of uh, this this point that um, coordinates all storytelling across the board, so that we don't, you know, inadvertently tell something that's contradictory, not only from a continuity point of view, but from a thematic point of view. Thanks for coming by, Pablo. It's always super fun to talk to you. Yeah, nice to um, And stick around, guys. There will be more Star Wars show in just a minute. The following segment of the Star Wars show is an ad from our friends at Target. Yippee! I love meeting fellow Star Wars fans. And last week on the Star Wars show, we showed you a group of rebellious fans who were handpicked by Target to be featured in a national ad. Well, today, we're here at the home of two of them to find out more. Hi. Hey, guys. Hi. Nice Hi. to Hi. meet you. Hi. Let's do it. Jennifer and Josh, thank you so much for inviting me into your cool Star Wars home. This has been an incredible tour. Target did a search for Star Wars fans all over the country and it shows you how did that come about. We had a Star Wars themed wedding that was a little bit rebellious because my family's a little bit more traditional, but we were determined to do that because it's an important part of our lives. How did you get to this place in your fandom? It's been important to you all your life? As a child, the message that really resonated was, you know, friendship, loyalty, and also seeing the diversity on screen it was so so powerful, red, green, blue, it didn't matter. You could be the good guy, you could be the hero, no matter what you looked like. And it also gave me hope that this was a galaxy far, far away, but maybe someday our world would be like Star Wars. And you can take that hope and you can gift it to your daughter by introducing Star Wars to her. Absolutely. Which you've done, which is beautiful. Uh -oh. We wanted to give you this gift from Lucasfilm and Target. It's a little bit of a late wedding gift. Thank you. Uh, it's a Target gift card As for you. As a we love Ooh. it. It's been great having you, but um, it's time for you to go. Oh, it's time to go? Yeah, sorry. Well, that's our show this week. Thanks so much to all of the fans. Oh. oh. Well, if it isn't our old friend, geez. Good to see you. Glad I wasn't the only one on extended break around here. What's that? Oh. Hmm. Well, I don't think anybody's done that yet. I mean, I'll ask the audience. I don't know why they would, but it's worth a shot. If you didn't catch any of that, Cheese thought it would be a great idea to see your Cheese fan art. And since there isn't any out there that we could find, we are asking you to make some. Tag your art with Cheesy Art. That's two threes for ease, and we'll feature our favorites next week. You happy, Cheese? Good. Finally, make sure to check out our brand new series, The Star Wars After Show, presented by Verizon, where I wrangle a panel of other Lucasfilm employees to talk more in depth about all the Star Wars from today's show. Check it out this Thursday and every Thursday only on youtube.com slash Verizon. Thanks for watching and may the force be with you. You're so much better in person. Oh, but the hologram was so much fun. <laughs> Come on. It was great. It was great for it was you. Great.